of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Daytime radio listening is a big part of Mrs. America's way of life. And on NBC, daytime radio is a big part of our overall schedule of top listening entertainment. Tune here tomorrow and each day, Monday through Friday, for such smile-provoking programs as Double or Nothing with your genial quiz master, Walter O'Keefe, Strike It Rich, the program of the heart presided over by Warren Hull, and Welcome Travelers, bringing Tommy Bartlett's interesting interviews with travelers in the Windy City. Radio also gets its ears boxed every day when Bob and Ray satirize the industry which made them famous. Later, Dave Garraway strolls through a pleasant quarter hour of enjoyable radio listening and invites you to join him for the proceedings. Yes, all through the day, NBC presents America's most popular radio programs, comedy, drama, music, and information. So if you suffer from the housework blues, let us brighten your day with the entertainment available on this station of the NBC Radio Network. Join us tomorrow morning, won't you? And now, today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Cover Up. It is 8 o'clock on the morning of Thursday, July 4th, 1946. 17 miles north of Lenape, Texas, farmer Lee Gaynor crosses the cornfields to the farm of Russell Hines, his neighbor and closest friend. When he reaches his friend's house, Gaynor goes up on the front porch, opens the door, and walks in. Russ, where are you? Russ, you back there in the bedroom? Uh, who are you? What are you doing here? You get out of here, please. You can't come in. What do you mean I can't come in? Who are you? What are you doing with that pail of water? I, I, I just clean up the floor. Now you go. You, you can't stay. That's so fast. Where's Mr. Hine? He's gone. He said, don't let nobody in the house, so please, you go out. Huh? I'm not going anywhere. Not till I get this straight. Now, where'd he go? I don't know, senor. He said that he'd go on vacation. That's all he said. Well, his car's outside. He couldn't go nowhere without his car. Well, he did. He'd go for two weeks. I don't believe it. Mr. Hines is my best friend. He wouldn't go off like that without telling me. Well, he did. You're lying. Who are you? What you doing here? I work here. No, you don't. I never saw you before. Senor Hines, uh, he hired me this morning before he leave. He left, huh? How come his watch and glasses and all the rest of his stuff is still on the dresser? Hey, where's his wallet? I don't know. I didn't take I it. I think you did. Now, let's see what you got. Wait a minute. What's that on the floor? Where? Right where I'm pointing. This looks like blood. Oh, see. See, that is. Senor Hines, he... And on the bed, too. What did you do to him? Nothing. Where is he? You tell me I'll beat it out of here. Please, senor. He have a nose bleed. Yeah. He tell me to clean up the blood. That's all I swear. You're lying. You tell me what you did with Mr. Hines. You tell me quicker, I kill you. I did nothing. Let me go, senor. I, did... I said tell me. I did not. I kill you. You ask for this, senor. Ah! You're not getting me. Uh, I did not. Come back here, you. I'll get you, you lousy killer. Lee Gaynor chased the stranger across the fields and into a wooded area. When the man ducked into the woods, Gaynor lost sight of him and was unable to pick up his trail. He then returned to his friend's house and called Sheriff Art Buckley, who in turn requested aid from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and arrived at the farmhouse shortly after the sheriff. There's a blood on the floor, Ranger. He's trying to clean it up with that bucket of water. And uh, there on the, the bed, blood splattered all over the pillow. You say this fellow told you Mr. Hines had a nosebleed? Yeah, but I don't believe that. Russ never had a nosebleed in his life, and I've known him since we was kids. I tell you, that Mexican killed him. You know if anything's missing? Yeah, Russ's wallet. Take a look at this dresser. Everything else is here except that. Here's his comb, his glasses. 
Now, I know Russ better than I know my own brother, and I tell you, he wouldn't go anywhere without his specs. It makes it look bad, all right. Yeah. You know how much money your friend was carrying in that wallet? Yeah, just about. Russ drew 300 bucks out of the bank on Tuesday morning. He's fixing to buy a Guernsey from Dave Morgan. Is that your friend's car parked out in front? Yeah, he sure wouldn't be going anyplace without that. Why don't we try to pick up that Mexican's trail? He might still be out in the woods. Well, he was heading into the hills when I lost him, Ranger. Might be afraid to come out. Yeah. Did you look around to see if you could find Mr. Hines in the barn, any place like that? No, 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 I didn't. Stayed in the house waiting for you to come. Now, just where did you chase that fellow? Uh, into the woods over there. Any other farms over that way? Not on this side of the hills. There's a good chance he's still out there. I'll get my horse from the trailer and see if I can pick up his tracks. In the meantime, Sheriff, why don't you look around near the house? Sure thing, Jase. I'll see you later. Now go along, Ranger. I know that hill country pretty good. All right. Maybe you can identify that Mexican if we catch up to him. Uh, He's got an awful big head start on us. Yeah, but if he's still on foot, he won't get far. I took Charcoal out of the trailer while Gaynor got one of the horses from the corral. To save time, he didn't saddle up but rode bareback. We went to the spot in the woods where Gaynor had lost sight of the man. A short distance away, I picked up his tracks. They were fairly easy to follow, and for 20 minutes, we covered a good deal of ground. Then near the hills, the trail petered out. I can't find any signs of him over here, Ranger. We better spread out a little more. Hey, wait a minute. Ooh, ooh, Charlie. Find something? Yeah, here they are. Turned here. Track swing over that way. Where? I don't see him. Look right along there. See how that brush is trampled? Oh, yeah. Sure got better eyes for tracking than I have. Get up, Charky. What's down this way? The road. Swings around in a loop. Looks like he was heading for it. Come on. Get up, boy. Unless somebody's giving him a lift, maybe we can catch up to him. There's the road over there, Ranger. You can see it through that break in the brush. Yeah. And there's someone walking along that shoulder right now. That, that's him. He's the one. Up, Charlie. Come on. He's running. Hold up, mister. Hey, you. Go away. Go away. Stop. Right there. Stop. Stop. Hold up, I said. Uh, whoa, whoa, Charlie. Whoa. This is him, all right. You lousy skunk. What do you want from me, senor? All right. Stand still while I frisk you. Uh, why you do this? What are you looking for? Yeah, just checking to see if you're carrying any weapons. Uh, Are you the one working back there in that farmhouse? No, no. Don't lie to me. I didn't do nothing. What's your name? Carlos Mendoza. Let's see your wallet. Here. Hmm. There's $40 in here. Where's the rest of it? <laughs> That's all I got. Why'd you kill him? I didn't. Where's Mr. Hines? What'd you do with him? I didn't do nothing. He hired me. He'd go on vacation like I thought. Don't lie. I'll make you talk. No, Hold it, Gator. Tell him around, Ranger. I'll make him tell the truth. You're no. not going to touch He's him, hear me? You're going to lie. You're going to let him get away with killing Russ. I want to see justice. We'll done. see justice done in the courts. Not the way you want to do it. All right, Mendoza. Let's get back to the house. We took Carlos Mendoza back to the farmhouse where we joined the sheriff. His deputies had arrived and were searching the area for Russell Hines. Mendoza continued to deny that he had killed or robbed anyone. But you've got to believe me. I wouldn't kill nobody. What were you doing here? I told you. Senor Hines, he gave me a job to clean up the place and stay here while he go away. You start this morning? Si, si. What time? Oh, gee, about dawn. You live around here? Uh, no, no. I, I was coming through with my family. I got a trailer about ten miles down the road. That's where Mr. Hines picked me up. He asked me if I want a job while he go away on vacation. Now, Russ, wouldn't have gone away without telling me? I know he would. All right, Gainer. Just keep out of this, will you? Where were you coming from, Mendoza? Eagle Pass, senor. Where were you going? To Waco. I got a cousin up there. He write me that he got a job for us in the cotton field. You say Mr. Hines hired you. Did he bring you over here in his car? See, si, see. Si. He bring me in his car and show me what to do. He feed the chickens and the stock and clean up the blood on the you floor. You sure that blood didn't get there when you killed Hines? No, Cherim, no, no. He said that he got a nosebleed and I am to clean it up. You were just working here. Why were you trying so hard to keep Mr. Gain around of the house? So he couldn't see what you were doing? No, no, Senor Hines told me to. He said, don't let nobody in the house while I'm gone. Nobody. He keeps saying that. You claim Mr. Hines went on a vacation. How come his car is still here? Some friend gonna pick him up and take him to the train. That's what he's saying. Then he walk out the door. <laughs> you gonna believe that, Ranger? 
How about that 40 bucks in his wallet? Yeah, where'd you get that? Did you take Mr. Hines' wallet? No, no, I didn't, Toki. Are you sure you didn't throw his wallet out in the field with the rest of the money in it so you could go out and pick it up later? No, no, I didn't take nothing. Where'd you get the $40? <sighs> Mr. Hines gave it to me. He gave me pay for two weeks. Yeah, Russ wouldn't have done that. He'd have give it to me to pay his hands off at the end of each week. I know, because I've done it before. He did give it to me. He did, I tell you. Sheriff, let's take Mr. Gaynor and this fellow down to your office and get their statements in writing. Good idea, Chase. Come on, Mendoza. You're taking me to jail? We sure are. You take Mendoza in your car, Sheriff. I'll follow along with Mr. Gaynor. Okay, Chase. Over here, Mendoza. And, Sheriff, you better tell your deputies not to let anyone on the ground. Yeah. Hey, Reimer, you hear that? No one's still near the place. This business take long, Ranger? No, not too long. Here's my car. Get in. Uh, not that I mind, of course. Hey, I do one thing. See if that guy gets what he deserves. My stock's got to be fed, and Russ is too. If I'm going to be in town all day, got to make arrangements for it. I'll see you get back as soon as possible. Excuse me. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead. This unit requests lab crew be dispatched immediately to Himes Farmhouse on Farm Road 306, 17 miles north of Lenapa. 10-4. We'll relay your message to lab Unit 10. 10-4, if no other traffic, Unit 10, clear. No other traffic, KDX sales. What do you need a lab crew for when you got the guy? Uh, they'll probably find a lot of things we missed. The more evidence we get, the better. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, I saw something over there in the brush. Looked like a man. A man? Yeah, looked like somebody got up out of the brush and fell back again. Just saw him for a second. How far off was he? Right around here, I think. There he is, behind that mesquite. Hey, that's Rush. Holy cats. Look at the blood on his head. Must have been left for dead. We better get him to a hospital, and fast. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. At this time of the year, we spend a lot of time out of doors, hiking and camping and on picnic trips in the woods and the mountains. That means more danger of forest fires. This summer, thousands of acres of valuable timberland will be destroyed because of carelessness. And in these days of defense emergency, our natural resources are more vital than ever. It's up to you to be sure that you do not cause the tragedy, the shameful waste brought about by a forest fire. Just follow a few simple rules. Crush out cigarettes, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using them. Drown all campfires, then stir and drown them again. Find out the law before using any kind of fire. Forest fires destroy timber, wildlife, and the water supply. They destroy the natural resources on which our nation depends. So don't be careless for a moment when you're in the mountains or woodlands. Forest fires are our most shameful waste. So remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Now, Act Two of Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Cover Up. Russell Hines had been beaten severely about the head and remained unconscious all the way into town. We got him to the local hospital where he underwent emergency treatment. I phoned the sheriff to come over. Two hours later, Mr. Hines was conscious and able to talk to us. Sheriff Lee Gaynor and I walked down the corridor toward his room. I'd sure like to know what that Mexican hit him with. The doc says it was something round, like a piece of pipe. When I get my hands on Mendoza, it'll take more than 34 stitches to sew up his head. You better wait out here, Mr. Gaynor. Yeah, but I want to see... Let's not disturb Mr. Hines any more than we have to. All right. Go on, Sheriff. Uh. Mr. Hines? Yeah? We'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, sir. You feel better now? Yeah, lots better. Can you tell us what happened? I don't think I can tell you very much. Well, anything at all will help. Well, I... I woke up and heard somebody over by the dresser. All I could see was a flashlight turning on me. You couldn't see who it was? No, sir. It was too dark. Besides, I don't see very good without my glasses. 
guess he, he saw I was awake. He came toward me and wham. I got hit over the head. That's all I remember. You know a fellow by the name of Carlos Mendoza? Who? Mendoza. No, sir. Never heard of him. Well, he claims you hired him to take care of your place. That's a lot of baloney. I don't have a hired man. Had one, but he had to leave last Tuesday. Who was he? A fellow by the name of Phillips. Howard Phillips. You think he could have done it? Well, I don't see how. He was too anxious to get off to work in the county rodeo over the 4th of July. He certainly wouldn't be coming back here. What kind of a man was he? He was pretty good. Seemed all right. Helped me break a horse. Was he with you long? No, just a couple of days. And you don't know anything about this fellow Mendoza? No, sir. If he says he works for me, he's crazy. Well, thanks a lot. We better let you get some rest now. We'll talk to you some more later on. Okay. Yeah, it looks like this Mendoza boy is going to have to come up with a better story. I mean, since Hines says he never heard of him, Mendoza must have been the one who attacked him. Could be. Well, does Russ know anything about this guy Mendoza? No. Huh, I told you. I told you that lousy cotton picker is just lying to save his own skin. Sure looks that way. Everything's pointing to him. Yeah, but just because Mr. Hines doesn't know him doesn't prove Mendoza attacked him. What do you mean, Jase? Was well, something Mr. Hines said that hit me kind of funny, Sheriff. Mr. Gaynor, didn't you tell us it was after 8 when you walked in on Mendoza? Well, yeah. What's that prove? Mr. Hines says he was wakened by a flashlight in his eyes. This time of year, it's daylight by 5.30 in the morning. What are you driving at, Jase? Well, look, if Mendoza did attack Mr. Hines and drag him out into the brush, why would he come back to the house and still be there three or four hours later? Uh, maybe, maybe he got scared and uh, come back to wipe up the blood. It was Mr. Hines' blood. I wouldn't put the finger on Mendoza. Why wouldn't he just keep going? I don't know, Jase. I may be wrong, but Mendoza's story just don't sound logical. Well, maybe not. Okay, Mr. Gaynor, we'll take you down to the sheriff's office and get your statement. Okay. Mr. Gaynor, your friend tells us he had a hired hand by the name of Howard Phillips working for him a few days ago. Yeah, that's right. You know what this Phillips looks like? Yeah, yeah. Tall and skinny, black curly hair. He has a heavy beard. A big beard? No, no, he shaves, but his beard's kind of dark, you know what I mean? Go on, get in, Mr. Gaynor. You think he could have known about Mr. Hines carrying so much money? Well, I imagine he could have. Did Russ think it was him? He didn't seem to think so. Well, I don't either. And I know for a fact he took off with the county rodeo at Harley on Tuesday. Russ drove him down to the bus depot himself. You haven't seen him around since? No, sir. And that's probably Mendoza. After we got Lee Gaynor's statement, we had a deputy drive him home. We wanted to keep him and Carlos Mendoza as far apart as possible. As soon as he had left, the sheriff brought Mendoza down from the lockup so we could question him again. In here, Mendoza. Mm. Take this chair by the desk. Mm, gracias. Mendoza, we found Mr. Hines. Oh, did you find him? Yeah. And he says he didn't hire you. Then he don't tell the truth. He says he never heard of you, Mendoza. Then he lies. He said to me to take care of the farm for two weeks. He even paid me. Rancher, he lies. Why would he want to lie? I don't know, but he hired me, I tell you. He take me there. He show me what to do, and I do it. And he told you not to let anyone in? See. Si. Had you ever seen Mr. Hines before? No, senor, never. Doesn't it seem kind of funny that he'd ask you, a total stranger, to stay in his house and tell you to keep everyone else out? Hey, but he needs somebody. He said that he go on vacation. And you saw him leave? Si, senor. Then you're lying. He can't go anywhere without his glasses, and they were left on the dresser. Eh? Glasses? But senor Hines don't wear glasses. The Mr. Hines we know does. Hey, wait a minute. If Mr. Hines doesn't wear glasses, just what does he look like? Uh, senor Hines? Yeah. Well, uh, he's a big man. About as big as you, but uh, kind of a bony... He, he got black hair. Jeez. Did he look like he needed a shave? Si, sí, si. Sí. You sure? Oh, I'm positive, senor. Why you ask me this? It sounds like Howard Phillips, Jace. It sure does. Maybe when he thought he'd killed Hines, he put Mendoza in the house to take the rap. Madre de Dios. Then it was not, senor Hines, huh? I don't think it was, Carlos. Then Phillips probably never did go to that rodeo. He might have. Then come back last night to steal the money. 
Could have gone back to the rodeo this morning and used it as an alibi. Let's go to that rodeo and find out. We released Mendoza with the understanding that he'd stay around town to identify Phillips in case he was our man. The county rodeo was being held at Harley, Texas. We got there too late for the afternoon performance. The sheriff and I questioned a couple of hands who suggested we look up a man named J.L. Major. He rented stock to the rodeos all over the state and was supposed to know everyone in the business. They described him as the biggest man with the biggest voice and the biggest cigar in all Texas. And said we could find him in town at the hotel. There it is, Jase. Other side of the street. Uh-huh. Let's cross here. I hope this man Major can give us a lead. <laughs> Some description we got of this guy Major. Should make him easy to spot. Oh, Go ahead, well, Jase. Thanks. Well, Looks like the rodeo crowd's that. taken over the whole lobby. Yeah. Yeah, I think I see Major. And where? Sitting on that leather couch, talking to those men. Oh, yeah. That must be him. Pretty good description at that. Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen men working all day to fill the hole he made. <laughs> Pardon me. Mighty good, boy. Are you, Mr. Major? Yeah, I sure I am. What can I do for you? I'm Ranger Pearson. This is Sheriff Buckley. Could we talk to you privately? Why, sure. Boys, I'll see you later. Got a good story about a hooli dancer I want to tell you about. <laughs> uh, where did you want to talk? Uh, let's go over by the stairs. All righty. Hey, tell us you know most of the rodeo people in Texas, Mr. Major. Not most of them, Ranger. All of them. Been renting stock to rodeos for over 28 years. Uh, one of you boys got a match. Yeah, I got some. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for somebody? Yeah. A man named Howard Phillips. Yeah. Howard Phillips. Phillips, 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 Phillips. Sure is a rodeo man. Supposed to be working this one over the holidays. Uh-huh. What's he look like? Tall, lanky. Usually looks like he needs a shave. Curly black hair. Uh, Phillips. Um, what's his line? Bulls? Cow milking? Bronx? We don't know. Uh, can't think of any performers named Phillips. Hey, uh, got another match. Sure, here you are. Uh, much obliged. Good cigar. Tall, lanky fellow, you say. That's right. Yeah, recollect you know a wily Phillips got killed by Bremer. Couldn't be him. Let's see. Howard Phillips, uh, black hair. Yeah, curly. Yeah. Maybe Mrs. Major knows him. Dolly? Hey, Dolly. All right, Sugar. Come over here a minute. Mrs. Major's one of the best trick riders in the business. She'd know anybody I don't know. Ready to go, honey? Pretty soon, doll, honey. First, I want you to meet some friends of mine. Ranger Pearson and Sheriff uh, Buckley, is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Glad to meet you, ma'am. Howdy. Howdy, ma'am. These fellas looking for a big, lanky man. Curly hair. Uh, What color did you say it was? Black. His name is Howard Phillips, ma'am. Howard Phillips? Yes, ma'am. His face is dark, like he needs a shave. Oh, sure. You know him, honey. I do? Yeah, Slim Phillips. Slim Phillips? Yeah. New fellow that works the shoots? Sure, that's him. Nobody calls him Howard, though. Why, sure. Tall fella. Curly hair. Yeah, of course, way. I knew I knew him. Know everybody in the business. You know where he is now? No, but he'll be at the rodeo grounds for the evening performance. We're heading there now. If y'all want to come along, I'll point him out to you. Thanks, ma'am. We'd appreciate that. We're kind of anxious to meet him. <laughs> The sheriff and I went out to the rodeo grounds with Mr. and Mrs. Major. Slim Phillips hadn't arrived yet. We stationed a few of the local police outside the grounds and took up positions in the arena by the chutes. Phillips was due to work. Mrs. Major had gone ahead to get her horse and was warming it up for the evening performance. <laughs> Look at that woman ride. Bet you never saw nothing like that before, Ranger. Hey, your wife sure knows how to handle a horse. Yeah, now watch this. There you go, Dolly. <laughs> Perfect Russian drag, wasn't it? It sure was. It's a beautiful Palomino she's got. Yeah, picked it out myself. Oh, boy. Oh, how's that, honey? Our 
Awful good, darling. Awful oh. good. Mighty nice, ma'am. Well, thank you, Ranger. Oh, by the way, I just saw Slim. Told him you wanted to see him. You did what? When? Just now. I yelled to him over by the corral. Come on, Sheriff. What's the matter, Ranger? Well, shouldn't I have told him? She's long on talent, but short on memory. Down this way, Sheriff. Yeah. You see him? No. There, that must be him. Running through the crowd. Phillips! Stop! Where'd he go? He's in those pens somewhere. Sheriff, you circle around through the crowd and work this way through the pens. Maybe we can flush him out. Where are you, BJ? I'll start from the runway and work toward you. Okay. Watch yourself now, Jase. Yeah. Phillips! Stop, Phillips! He's heading for those bulls, Jase! All right, Phillips. Stay right where you are. Okay, Ranger. Okay. You ain't gonna take me! No! Hold it, Phillips! Let go of me! I said hold it! All right, Ranger. I've had enough. Don't hit me again. Don't hit me. Get up. Uh, Are you okay? Yeah, Sheriff. Now, hold out your hands, Phillips. The framers are getting a little bit edgy, Chase. We better get him out of this pen. Yeah. So he can walk right into another. Come on. just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Today, there's a continuing lineup of great radio shows on this NBC station with a variety of entertainment features. Later this afternoon, Best Plays will present the Philadelphia Story, Philip Barry's highly successful comedy of manners. Starring in the Philadelphia Story on Best Plays will be Betty Furness, Joan Alexander, and Myron McCormick. In the music department this afternoon, you're invited to keep tuned for a full-hour concert from world-famed Hollywood Bowl. Today's concert will feature Dorothy Warren Scholl, Jan Pierce, and Igor Gorin. Another highly entertaining program today on NBC will be broadcast from Meredith Wilson's music room. Meredith will have lovely Esther Williams as his special guest, and I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing them talk about music, swimming, and anything else that happens to pop up in the course of their informal conversation. So for the finest in radio entertainment, be sure to keep tuned to the NBC Radio Network. And now the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Howard Phillips was positively identified by Carlos Mendoza as the man who had hired him and impersonated Russell Hines. On September 9, 1946, he was found guilty of burglary and assault with intent to commit murder. Phillips was sentenced to 15 years in the state penitentiary at Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of... The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. In the cast, you heard Tony Barrett as Carlos Mendoza. The role of Mr. Major was portrayed by Paul Fries, and Dolly Major was Betty Lou Gerson. The part of Lee Gaynor was played by Lamont Johnson. Leo Curley was the sheriff, and Lou Krugman was heard as Slim Phillips. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Betty Mears. And the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, hear the Hollywood Bowl concert on NBC.